This family is your brother, Mark Lamont Hill. Welcome to night school. As always, Monday to Friday at 1030 p.m. Eastern time, we are here. It is not a podcast. It is not a TV show. It is a global classroom. We break down ideas. We break down stories. We break down concepts. We break down politics. We do it all. But it's not just politics. It's not just the stuff that you see on the news. It's also our culture. It's also our history. And today on night school, we got a special guest lecturer. <laughs> we got different sisters in the world, man. She is a legendary journalist. She is a hip hop icon. She is one of <laughs> our favorite people who I've never had the pleasure of actually kicking it with or meeting. So this is right for me too. The legendary D Barnes. What's going on? What's up, brother? How are you? I am good. I am good. It's good to see your face. You're looking healthy. You're looking happy. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you. Not bad for an old lady. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, whatever. <laughs> so I got an audience of people here who are literally from all over the world uh, and right. they're multiple generations. So it's, a, it's an interesting mix. I want people to sort of know your story and know who you are. For me, I'm, I'm, I, <laughs> I was watching this right. I was watching this clip today and I said, let me, let me, let me pull it up. I was, uh, let me see if I can pull it up. Right oh here. God, don't embarrass me. It ain't, nothing bad. It ain't nothing bad. Oh, it, word, word, word. I love that. This is, this is. Love that video. This is body and soul right here. This is body, this is the soul. This is almighty. I'm Zaya. This is. Hey. This is. Yo, we getting ready to rock shit. Again. Again. <laughs> Again. That's Rose. Rose said that. All my tea. Lo, I love, you know, I love that so much. We shot that in Times Square. Uh, Tamara Davis. The director, you might know her most mostly from um, Half Baked. Everybody knows that movie in particular, but she's done right. a bunch of movies, commercials, all kinds of stuff. And she did all of the videos for Delicious Vinyl. She also did that documentary on uh, Basquiat, uh, oh. Radiant Child, Radiant Child. That was one of her films that she did. And uh, we just went out on the street and just started shooting, <laughs> which, yeah. I, you know what I'm saying, guerrilla style. I love it. Which is crazy. I can't even imagine rolling through Times Square right now with a with a crew just running, gunning, and making a whole video. Yeah, I don't think I don't think we well, we definitely wouldn't be able to get away with it. Not today. Definitely, <laughs> not definitely. to not as easy, unless we use phones though, because you know they wouldn't they wouldn't oh, they wouldn't cool. question they wouldn't question the iPhones. But we couldn't do it with we had a camera then. We can do it. We can do it now. Then you're like, where's your permit? So 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 for people that don't know, your your start. Um, before all the stuff we're gonna get to, right? Would you say your first start is as a hip hop, as a as an artist, as as a rapper? Oh, most definitely, yes, definitely. I grew up, you know, in hip hop. I tell this story all the time because it was just like that the scene out of the movie uh, Brown Sugar, where the kids was in the park and they saw the other kids rhyming in the circle. It was like it was like that moment for me when I was first exposed to you know I was a youngster in Brooklyn, and I saw that. And I was fascinated by it. I was drawn to it, the music, you know, because music, of course, growing up in an in African-American household, there's music, you know, all around you. And my aunts and my mom in particular have a hell of a, a vinyl collection, which, mm. which is now my collection. Right. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, sorry, mom. And uh, yeah, so, you know, music has always been a part of my life. Um, that was my that was the the path that I was on. I was gonna like, you know, I was on some old uh rock star, you know what You're I mean? Talking, look, I, that's what I saw, you know, where I was going. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'd be in the house singing with the brush. Oh man, you know what I mean? and then I would stop and like you know, ask people <laughs> questions. So I'm over there hosting and interviewing, you know, five years old, trying to entertain everybody. My aunt used to do these um Remember the, they weren't really rent parties, but she used to do the fish fries, especially on a Friday. Friday night, the fish fry, people would come over, music would be blasting, and I would be, you know, trying to be the entertainment. No one asked me to, <laughs> but <laughs> I, you know, to. I got to, right? I got to perform until it was bedtime. Yo, that's what's up. <laughs> so how did you end up in Body and Soul? Because when I think of Body and Soul, I think of West Coast. Right. I came out, well, I'm originally from New York. 
uh, Queens, New York, to be exact. And I came out to California like the summer of 86. And it was wild because I was going to go to school out here in particular. But I had that demo tape with me. And my demo tape was produced by um, members of Stetsasonic. Those are my big brothers like out on the uh, East Coast. Shout out to Stetsasonic too. They just dropped a new album. You guys got to check it out. Go to their page. Find them on Instagram. Find them on uh, Twitter. I still call it Twitter, but you know, whatever X. Me too. That's what it's going to be. But Stet just dropped a, a new album and they are the original hip hop band. Before the Roots took the mantle of a hip hop band, know your, know your history, know your hip hop history. It was Stetsasonic right. that set it off. And even the Roots will tell you that. Oh, yeah, for so, sure. I had my demo tape. I came out to California and All My T, which was my partner in Body and Soul, was part of the famous Mix Masters on KDAY. And they had a, there was a group in particular. It was uh, DJ Tony G and um, Mix Master Trick and Lady T, All My T. And they were in the middle of like, actually, they were finishing up the album when we met. And I saw her perform for the first time uh, at World on Wheels. Mm. And she got on the mic, and I was just blown away because she was rhyming to like all of the fast stuff. When I came out to California, a lot of people were, um, the, the music was very up tempo, like techno, very uh, like planet rock. Everything was on that level. You know, Egyptian lover, um, a mm. lot of the techno stuff. A lot of the stuff you've seen actually in that movie, Breaking. Everything yeah. was like very, very fast paced. And right when I came out to California, that's when things started slowing down. As a matter of fact, Everlasting Bass, which was Rodney on Joe Cooley, is the track that was um, mixed into this, this beef we have right now, this little rap battle uh, like that, that was released. And that's that's like the the, the uh, sample that they use, right. Everlasting Bass. But that I bring up that song because that's when everything started slowing down. So it was like, to, you know, Mix Master Spade, Toddy T, uh, King T, and Rodney and Joe Cooley were really like the ones that were slowing it down. And of course, Ice T with uh, six in the morning, police at my door. So uh, that's when really the hip hop in California started to like, you know, uh, build itself in that in that what we hear right now that West Coast sound. Yeah, it started with the up tempo stuff and Uncle Jam's army in particular. Well, mostly out here, like in the East Coast, there was a lot of there was dance crews too, because of course we had breaking, but um, mostly it was like a lot of MC crews. All the crews were made up of, you know, all the elements: graffiti artists, DJs, MCs, and breakers. Sometimes where, you have all those elements together. Where where do women fit into that? Because a lot of times when people think of breaking crews, they think of all dudes. When they think of early MC crews, they think of all dudes. Right. Um, especially in the West Coast. Women were there from the beginning. Not to cut you off, but women were there from the very beginning out in the park. They were out there breaking. They were out there doing graffiti. They were on the mic. You know what I mean? We have the matriarchs on, on the uh, East Coast. You know, MC Shyrock, Lisa Lee, Debbie D, MC Debbie D. You know, mm. they... Those were the women that I looked up to and listened to. Sequence, uh, in particular. What about the Angie yes. Stone? Angie Stone, you know, Blondie, uh, Charlotte Pearl. There was another uh, MC I used to hear, uh, MC Pebbly Poo. But to Ooh. answer your question, basically, yeah, I know I'm, I'm pulling out the names. <laughs> but the basically, names. Yeah, women Poo. have been there from the beginning, and it kills me when people they think that this is a novelty or like we just got here. No, we were there from the very beginning. We were out in the park with the guys and a lot of the, the OGs like you know, the Grandmaster Flash, the Melly Mel's Curtis Blow, um, Grandmaster Cast, who just had a birthday and Cool Hurt just celebrated birthdays. Um, they know and they know these women and they know that they were there. It's like the next generation that came along is just like, oh, where'd the women come from? type right. thing. And a lot of today too, what I have a problem with really is like a lot of these kids don't really know the history. No, they're not. They, they, you know, like I put out a tweet the other day talking about, Oh, we're losing recipes <laughs> because nobody's following the, 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 the unwritten rules. You know what I mean? I was like, well, maybe we need a handbook or something. That's why something. I'm, I'm glad we're on night nice school. That's it. <laughs> Class That's is in it. session, baby. Class is definitely in <laughs> session. How did you get 
from the MC world to the journalism world? Okay, like I was telling you back in the day, you know, I knew I always thought it was either going to be, you know, rock star, reporter, or both. And um, that was something I was going to school for. So at the same time, shopping my demo tape. And as, you know, the blessings came down on me, I got a record deal and I got offered that television show, which was Pump It Up. And so that's how I just like slid from one from one thing to the other. And at, at first I was doing both of them, but then it became um, all Pump It Up. Uh, due to due to some battles that we had as women artists with our record label, we just had you know creative differences. I love what, what, what kind of what kind of battles were those? I think that's what people don't get. Like you got you people think once you get the record deal, especially back then, that was it. You were set. It's time to make music right. records. What happens between getting that that contract and and not getting the album out? We recorded a whole album. It's funny that you brought that up too, because someone else just asked me that maybe an hour before you know came on the show. What happened to the album? And it was just never released. We recorded a full album, but when I was saying the creative differences, the group name was Body and Soul. And at this time, back when I'm talking back in the late 80s, so 87, 88, we're recording this album. They wanted us to be more body than soul. We had a vision. We had a vision for ourselves. They had another vision for us. So, you know, we kind of we kind of butted heads, man. No disrespect to Delicious Vinyl. I'm still uh, on great terms with, you know, both the um, executives of the label. We still we're family. You know what I mean? We still stay in touch. I still have love for all my my label mates. But at that time, we were the only women group on on the label. And I don't think they really knew what to do with us and who, what they who, wanted to do be like were they thinking like jj fad were they thinking like like who who were they thinking about like in terms of like you image, know a, uh, a lot of the time that's so funny a lot of the time um do you remember latrim yeah <laughs> we like the cars the cars that go boom we're right. tigra and bunny and we like the boom they wanted more that they wanted like what you see right now with a lot of the female um mcs that are like embracing you know their body and being sexy and you know all of that we were on some other thing we were on we, we grew up in the school of you know public enemy and right. sister soldier we were raptivists as right. you know so we were on some other other things you know what i mean revolution <laughs> I mean, basically, we were conscious rappers in a, in a in an unconscious world. <laughs> basically, yeah, there goes my girls with trim, and it, and I loved them, you know. And I, we wanted to compromise, you know what I'm saying? We wanted to right. compromise, but yeah, but those are my girls. I love them. It, right, and they they were dope, but like 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 you said, we we need space for all of them. And right, back then, they didn't want space for all of them. No, you know what I'm saying? We were in our lane, and we knew it, and. If we had, if if we if they had stood behind us like they should have, we would have definitely excelled. But you know, back then and even now today, you know, a lot of women face you know challenges. I'll put it like that: challenges within the music industry about about their artistry. You know what I mean? And we we're artists first, and we stuck to our principles. And sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. When you you know. When you stick to your principles and we just happened to lose out on it and you know and it took us a minute to you know for the contracts to expire and to maybe like you know fight to get our masters and things and they so that the album is a full album that was never released you know you gotta put that thing out right yes <laughs> we, we're know. talking about it we're talking about it we're talking about it right now because you know why not why, why not, not? And we're, we're much older now, and I'm talking about all of us involved. You know what I mean? We have a different perspective. You know what I'm saying? With, come, with age comes wisdom. So now we know. Well, for sure. Now we know. So we'll see. But you got blessed anyway. You pivoted from that moment to pump it up, which for right. a lot of us is, I mean, it's, it's it, I don't even know how to describe it other than to say it is one of the most important 
spaces in hip hop. I mean, there's Rap City. There's you know, there's there's only a handful yes. of things that I think matter in the way to pump it up. But again, break 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 down what Pump It Up was. You know, when I got Pump It Up, even being young back then, I realized to me it was important. Maybe not so much to the network. At the time, we were on the Fox network, Fox. which is completely different from what people, when they hear Fox, they, what they think of. But if you go back in the days, we're talking about, uh, they had, we started off with like, there was Cops, there was America's Most Wanted, there was The Simpsons, Married with Children, Married Rock. With children Rock, and then we had like, Joan Rivers, red. Joan Rivers' uh, Late Night Show. So, and this is before Living Color, because when I started pumping up, I think I was there maybe less than a year before in Living Color wound up being on the same lot. So I would finish with Pump It Up and run down to In Living Color and go hang out, you know, watch their show and laugh, <laughs> to be in tears because they were so, if you think okay. they were funny on camera, whew, off camera, yeah. they were in incredible. I mean, you know, and then there was this whole hip hop element that Rosie Perez brought to the show with the Fly Girls. So I was there. And then my DJ who was in Body and Soul, uh, rest in peace, DJ Trey he wound up doing a lot of the um, cutting and scratching that Sean was doing because Sean wasn't, Sean um, Waynes was, at the time wasn't a, a real DJ. So, you know, he was, he was kind of making the moves and then like they had to have a real day, DJ do it. And so it, it happened to be just, you know, my DJ who would hang out with me all the time on the set of uh, Pump It Up. Thank God, because he helped me document a lot of, you know, what I was doing at that time. So, yeah, to break it down with Pump It Up, they were looking for a hip hop show. And I believe it was because, you know, hip hop was popular at the time. There was already Yo! MTV Raps um, that was out. And then I think uh, Rap City came after that. So, like, we were like the third one. And they wanted to do some different. They 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 set out wanting um, a female host, so they auditioned all of these girls. And you know, long story short, I you know they offered me the role, and I went to my group and was like, "Yo, what do you guys think?" Blah 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 blah. And everybody was like, they vetoed it. It was like, "No, it's gonna mess up the album. We're gonna be on tour." Whoop whoop whoop. And I was like, "Okay, okay." So I told them no. Really? Them no. I told them, no, I was like, yeah, my, group, my group said, no, I, you know, I just was like, no, thank you. And uh, they had another girl do it. And who was a dancer, as a matter of fact, um, she was the dancer in um, My Prerogative, the Bobby Brown video. She was one oh. of the dancers, Cla Claudia, but Claudia, that was the, her, her name. And um, shout out to Claudia. And she hosted it for, the first month and a half that it aired. So maybe she did like maybe 10 episodes, I think. Mm -hmm. And they were going to cancel the show. Why? I don't know what, I don't know. I don't know what the problem was, but something wasn't working. And they asked me again. So, you know, how many times do you get asked twice in this business? Never. Never. <laughs> so as soon as they, they didn't even get the sentence out. Do you want? Yes. I just told him yes, and I was going to deal with the aftermath of the, the crew or whatever. Yeah. And I wound up doing maybe about another month of episodes. And we had this big syndication meeting. I'm the only Black person in there, the only woman. Well, actually, no, there was one other woman. But I'm talking like table full of men, all white men, one woman, one white woman, and a <laughs> little young me. And they decided they were going to syndicate it. And then we went national and I was like, oh, wow. I didn't, you know, I didn't really realize what that was or what that meant at the time. I just knew I, I thought that, you know, hip hop to me, you know, I grew up in the culture. I love it. So I wanted to like document it. I wanted to like, you know, elevate it to the highest level. And I took my responsibility me very seriously. You know what I mean? Not, not myself serious, but the, the responsibility of representing. I took that very seriously. And, and, and that's an important point because there's some younger folk in the room, I'm sure, of this generation that 
just when they want to watch a music video, when they want to hear a rap song, they just pick up their phone and choose it. Right. But, you know, there was a time where pre-internet to get music, it had to come on your radio station or mm-hmm. it had to come on one of these rap video shows. We were coming home trying to watch Yo! MTV rap, trying to watch rap, yep. trying to wait for uh, video music box or jukebox, depending on what city you were in. To, to get these songs so if you got your song once a day twice a day three times a day you would i mean you would, that was crazy it was you, you loved it and then they started doing those um 1-800 numbers where you would call yeah like a like the video jukebox yeah and you would choo- choose your, your choose song. yep and you would pay to get your your video played you'd pay I, to I, see a video yes and and, and it, it, it was crazy and so y'all were tastemakers you know y'all y'all in a lot of ways either took something that was doing well and blew it up or took something that people didn't know about yet and made it a thing. I mean, that is a responsibility. It was, you know, and I wanted to, from my point of view also, I wanted to, um, that's what they they tried to model the show after uh, Cops. If you remember Cops, Cops Week, the camera was always rolling. Yep. And so we tried to emulate that. The cameras were always rolling. And at that time, it started off that way and then it stopped. So I wound up trying to document it myself on the side while we were actually shooting the show. Mm-hmm. But I loved going to different neighborhoods and seeing like, you know, what made this artist, what 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 inspired them? How did they become the person that, and, and what, you know, all of the ingredients that goes into their music. So that's why I loved going to everybody's hood. You know what I mean? I went to, and I, and luckily, you know, not being um, being neutral, so to speak. I was able to go to different, you know, gang territory. So if I was interviewing, say, the Booyah tribe, that was most predominantly like blood, you know, neighborhood. If I was doing something with um, Kid Frost, then we were in East LA. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you was, you was then, outside. You was with the I was Booyah outside, and- outside. You know what I mean? Like we were outside and I and I never felt um, unsafe, never felt unsafe. And we you know this is back in the day. I had no security. We'd be on the streets. Just I was telling you how we did with with Tamara Davis and the video. We would be on the streets like that, just like guerrilla style filming. And as the show grew in more popularity, you know, they, the crowds would get bigger if they figured out what it was, you know, oh, let's pump it up. Right. And it would get out of hand and I never really felt like, oh, I'm in danger or, oh, I need security or, you know, it didn't even get like that. Like, like you said, we were outside and then yeah. I would go, we, then we traveled. We traveled all over to, um, just all over the place, you know, and we did like, I did this whole thing with um, the flavor unit with Queen Latifah in New Jersey. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm talking like the whole crew was there, um, which was amazing. Um, a lot of New York stuff. It's speaking of Times Square, Eric B and Rakim, who I hope when they announce it on Sunday are getting inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It's about time. It's about time. And speaking of about time, that's why I have one. I gotta, I gotta break it up for a minute on this hip hop talk about bad brains. This is why I'm representing because they should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Wait a minute, wait, 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 I don't wait, know wait. what's taking so damn Bad long. Brains is not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. No. <laughs> no. Someone put a gun to my head you know right now. Me, so, so Bad Brains. And that infuriates me because I want them celebrated while they're all here, while all the OG members are with us. They should get their flowers. They should get their recognition now, not when you know, God forbid, after the fact. So what's and up? We do that too often, <laughs> you know. It's always with black artists in particular. And, you know and, what and I mean? I mean these, these, these are trendsetters. They are, you know, bad brains. And my boys go, man. They they are game changers. Incredible, incredible. Are, I got to see them last. Funk reggae. I mean, what they did for the genre, not just for black artists. What they did for the genre. Yes. Is, oh my They God. influenced everyone else. Everybody. And see, it's, and it's always black artists in particular that create it, influence everyone else, and then get lost yep. in the mix. So when they start, you know, acknowledging, well, this one or that one, only the real ones will admit, well, you know, 
bad brains for me. You know what I mean? But yeah. only the only the real ones will admit it. Other than that, they don't even mention them. They'll mention other groups and other artists. You know what I mean? So I had I'm sorry, I had to do <laughs> I digress. No, you, I had you, to shout you, out. I had to learned. shout out, you know what I mean? You just schooled me. I, I did not out. know bad brains was not in yeah, oh man, my. it's ridiculous. And I think they've only been like in the mix as far as like uh, in the mix for the n- nominations. I don't know how many times really. I I only know personally one time of just a couple of years back, uh, 2016, 17. That's then crazy. They were, they were in the, you know, the voting. And I was trying to, you know, I was like, vote, everybody vote, <laughs> everybody oh. vote. And I don't think they knew, you know, I don't think uh, other people knew or people or there wasn't enough votes for them. I, I think you're right. Somebody shouted them out. Yeah, they DC. They, they are DC natives. They represent they, mm-hmm. they the Chocolate City, yo. They yeah. They, bad brain. I mean, they were my introduction <laughs> to punk. Honestly, really. Yeah, um, because I was listening to, um, you know, some, you know, like '80s rock and stuff like that, and then I got into right. some stuff. And then my old head was like, yo, you know, like black people did this shit. And then they was, they was like, you need to listen to punk. And I was like, but I'm, you know, and I didn't know if they meant like late, like, you know, like that Rick James era of punk. Like, right. Sort of. mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, I can get with that. Like, you need bad brains. And then they, then, they, yeah. then they brought me into it. And I was like, oh, okay. Now I was I- always in spaces where if I liked the music, I would search out, well, who's the black artist? Because I always knew there was one. So right. like, for example, when we go back, I, I lived in Jersey for a while. And so, you know, the group, of course, in Jersey was the Misfits. Everybody knew who the Misfits were. But I always was like, aha, bad brains. And like all the kids would play, you know, that's why I say I get my, my rock ed- education from New Jersey because they all the kids were like um, Led Zeppelin and Rush. And I, and I would be wearing Jimi Hendrix shirts all damn day long <laughs> you know and they were like they what you gonna say what you gonna say this is jimmy right. hendrix yeah your man learn from my man what's up exactly you know what i mean i was it was wow. always for me it was always like because i always knew that you know i don't care what the genre is you could you could say opera you know look what's happening with country right now with cowboy carter Ooh. look what's happening thank god for you know beyonce bringing it to the forefront because it was always there. These artists were there. You know what I'm saying? Yes. But people are, are watching Beyonce and she brought them, she brought them to the forefront. I love do, it. Do, do, do you do you like um this term Beyonce's made the last two albums in terms of doing like the, the Renaissance, obviously the, the kind of homage to, to house and, yes. and that I love it. And now going country. You are you feeling it? Oh, I'm definitely feeling it. And I'm hoping act three is is uh rock and roll. I'm hoping we get all Ooh. Tina, we get all Betty Davis. You know what I mean? I want to hear some Rico Nasty on there. I want to hear some Phoebe Dobson on there. I mean, I'm just I'm so excited. Like, let me, I'm trying to like hold it together. Just let me enjoy <laughs> Cowboy Carter and all of the fruits of that tree. You know what I mean? Before the next harvest <laughs> of the rock and roll. I know we're going to get it. See, she gonna you give it took to my brain somewhere else. You know, I didn't even. <laughs> Honest to God, I thought the actor was going to be gospel. Oh, I, that's a possibility. That's but I like, possibility. I like you. Go, I, I think I, I'm I, hoping it's rock and roll, though. I'm hoping it's rock and roll. Too, she, she is really digging in the crates. You know what I'm saying? Beyonce is. is digging in the crates. You know, give her props. And, and you know I gotta what? I got to give her props on being an MC too. Yo, she's she, like, she be rocking the mic. Yo, she <laughs> really be rocking the mic. I, yeah. I, I, lo- I love what she does and I, I I like where you're going with it because part of what Beyonce's been doing in a lot of ways is is, is doing something that's unpredictable mm-hmm. and doing something educational for the audience. So yes. even in this country, I mean, it's country, but it's also like stretches the boundaries. Of, it, it's, it's really a genre bending album. It's country. Mm-hmm. And you got songs like Texas Hold'em. You could put that on the country charts. Right. Some of these songs is like a mix of all kinds of genres. And really, it's just a, it's like a black music history lesson. Mm-hmm. It's a gumbo. She, yeah. it's, a, it's gumbo. You know what I mean? She's giving us musical gumbo. I love it. I mean, she said, uh, this is not a country album. It's a Beyonce album. And it is. Right. It really See, is, you know? And that's why gospel wouldn't be as... as pre- it, gospel would be predictable. Like, everybody does a gospel album. Right? I mean, the rock and roll, you could say, is predictable, too. You never know, though. I mean, it could be opera. She dropped a little opera on us. <laughs> so oh. you, don't, you don't know where... You don't know what she's coming from. But, I, you know... 
I say all of that just so we can get back to 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 hip hop. You know, I just I, I know I went off on a bender there, but I had to I had to talk about I Bad Brains it. and you know the DC influence for me because our first single, Body and Soul, bringing it back to to hip hop, we did with Trouble Funk. We did a uh, single dance to the drummer's beat, and mean yep. instead of sampling um, the Herman Kelly thing, we had Trouble Funk play, you know, the track. So we we, we got to work with, you know, DC legends. Wow, wow! Do I know you, what a blessing. Do, do you miss Do you miss the music? Yes, yes, I do. I do. I still write. I write mostly for me now. I haven't, you know, I want to put out some music, but. It's just been the frequency changed for me when I when I was writing when I was telling you how positive we were and all stuff. So after the incident that took place with Dr. Dre, my music changed. You know what I mean? And what I was spitting was a little bit darker, <laughs> and maybe it was cathartic. You know what I mean? Like therapy to get off, but it was something that I didn't want to release into the world. I'm very intentional with, you know. I think most artists are. We sensitive about our shit, right. <laughs> like Eric Rabatu said. Um, but you know, I'm I don't want to release that type of music out into the world. You know, that yeah. that's real when we talk about you know music and vibrations and frequencies and all of that. And that's not the type of, of energy that I want to put out there. So until I until I find that balance again, then I'll you know I'll release some music, but, you is, know. Is, is, is it still rap or are you doing like spoken word? Or are you doing R&B? Oh, doing... um, <laughs> uh, a little bit of all of that, a little bit of a all of that. You know, okay. it's, it's, yeah, I love, you know, I can sing, you know, rhyme. It'll be, it'll be a mixture of. It's not, it's not a, a rap album, it's a D Barnes album. Yeah, <laughs> that part, <laughs> that part, most definitely. We'll see, we'll see. I love that. You mentioned the Dr. Dre incident. I don't want to make you go through all that. I know you have, there's a lot of places. Yeah, yeah. Well, I but couldn't I, tell, I couldn't make that point without saying why I don't do the, the music. Understood, anymore. understood. But just for my audience's benefit, if you don't mind, I'm just going to say that you you had a very, at the time, uh, well published. You were assaulted by Dr. Dre. I don't make it complicated. Yes, yeah. You were at a party. Dr. Dre attacked you. He physically assaulted you in front of lots mm -hmm. of people. It's not a mm -hmm. mystery. It's not a who done it. Right. It, it, it's not a you know you know did it happen? Um, you sued. Uh, Dr. Dre continues to be uh, a giant in hip hop, um, mm -hmm. and it seemed like the response to you was something different. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't the only woman that was attacked also. And, you know, to, to my, my response to that is that I feel that um, the way that that was handled within hip hop, I feel like had that been addressed uh, directly, that we wouldn't have all of this residual of these after effects, this aftermath of this, this, this constant misogyny uh, in, in hip hop. The sexism has always been there on both sides. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But the misogyny really took a turn um in in that, you know, within that that incident, I feel. Um and with the other incidents, you know, because there were incidents before me, and I'm not speaking with just myself and Dre, like within hip hop, within the industry, yeah. there's been other you know male rappers that have physically assaulted women there have been you know we, we see what's happening right now in the headlines with all the charges you know the sexual assault charges that are you know permanent in 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 in, in the music industry right now this is something that's not new it's always been there did but everything is being the truth is being you know brought to the light basically did were you surprised so the Dre incident happens afterward. Did you expect more support from hip hop? More expect more support from men? Who <laughs> Absolutely. Because I mean, you knew some of these cats. Like I mean, not just I knew some of these cats. It was just like I grew up in the era of the Heel Project. And if, if anybody's familiar, like I was talking about, everybody got to know their history. The self destruction. Yes. Well, I had just recorded. We're all in the same gang, and Dre produced. 
I'm in the studio. I'm in the studio with him. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. So I expected more unity. I expected more people to speak up. But when I look back on it, too, a lot of this was new for for all of us. No one really knew how to act or how to um, react or, you know, what steps to take. There was just this code of silence that really shocked me. Like everybody was just like, you know, keeping their mouth closed. And I saw, you know, people um, privately support me and then publicly, you know, be out there. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. Yeah. 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 So, that, that, that had to be heartbreaking. Um, It was. It was at first. But... You know, you you grow and you learn. But again, it was it was very disappointing. It was very. It was a. I was just talking about um, the recent uh, quiet on the set mm-hmm. about the whole thing with the child actors and Nickelodeon and Disney, and um, Drake Bell was telling his story about how when he went to court and he's on his side of the courtroom, it was just him and his mom and. I think his dad and maybe his lawyers. And then on the other side, it was all these people that were supporting, you know, his his abuser. And, you know, that was heartbreaking. When I heard that, I was like, ah, I could relate. You know what I mean? That's how, you know, I I see it. Um, Because we we traveled in the same circle. So we knew a lot of the same people. And even though people have said things to me privately, like publicly, they're quiet. They're quiet about it. And some, you know, I'll see them in, in the in the photos at the events. And I'm like, oh, okay. okay. Is it hard not to be bitter? I mean, not, maybe bitter is the wrong word. I would, oh. I would be, when I see somebody show me that love and then they out with him shaking hands or smiling. Yeah. The best, maybe it's. I don't do I would, bitterness. I don't do bitterness, baby. That's why the skin is clear because the because the conscience is clear. I know you. Know, I don't do it. I think it was Lena Horne that said. Uh, hate will make you make you ugly, age you. <laughs> love will keep you beautiful. And I have nothing but love in my heart for all of them, including, you know what I mean? The, the forgiving, done. Because, you know, forgiveness is really for yourself. You know what I mean? Did you ever now, get the apology? You, did you ever feel like you, I, mean, I, I saw Dre apologize to all the women he heard this generic yeah. I know that I don't know what who who is he referring to. I guess all of us. We were all lumped into a <laughs> in like, one in one sentence. <laughs> that, that's like the LL. Uh, the, but you know, LL be like, this is you know, I'm put sending the song out to you. You know who you are. You know, like it's right, like, right. I don't say no name because now everybody could claim it. Like, was that like a ge- generic? That was like a generic apology. For I mean, it was probably lawyers telling him, you know, don't say that because if you say this name and leave out that name, I mean, I don't know. Um, yeah. but. No, I think anybody that anybody that that harms anyone and they want to make amends, there has to be um, there has to be energy behind that. There has to be good energy behind that, and you have to really, you know, sit down and you know maybe face to face with the person, and you know, if it's if it's if you truly mean it. You know what I mean? I think there has to be. And there was um, no attempt at that. You never heard. Have you, you never heard from him since that day? Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna not comment on that. Fair, fair yeah. enough. Yeah. When, when you think about the way your career is going since then, is it that people just don't want to go near somebody who they think might sue, or do you think it was a more concerted effort to actually undermine your career? You know, that is a mystery. I'm not sure because, you know, the suing part, I, I, you know, I guess on a corporate level, maybe, I don't know, but I couldn't, I could not tell you. I just, I do know that um, from what I've heard from a few people who were uh, brave enough to speak to me personally, um, you know, and then it became like, my name became like um, an adjective. I don't want to get D Barnes. <laughs> right whether that meant physically harmed or ostracized, right. you know what I mean? Right. So, you know, when there's money involved, 
People are, you know, people are funny. Money is funny. It's funny how money change situation. <laughs> Miscommunication yes. change and complications. Yes. Um, shout out Miss Lauren Hill. Yes, she was, uh, that, you, was, that, Hill. Woo, that was some, that's my favorite ones, lost ones. Um, she was spitting. She was, she was spitting and, you know, she was, I was the same. <laughs> I feel you, Miss, Miss Hill. Right. Um, yeah, you know, I just think that people who don't don't know the story or have heard different different aspects of the story um you know they don't they don't want to take a stand they don't want to take a stand on either side or you know and see that's the shit i hate i'm sorry it's just yeah they say either side as if this isn't like You're right a difference of opinion yeah and like, I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? say jay-z nas word i'm built i'm built different you 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 assault my friend. I, I'm not fucking with you. Right. <laughs> my right. life. We, we done. We done. That's I mean, it. I'll be cordial, um, but I'm not gonna. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna be hanging out with you after you did that to my friend. No. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I've I've experienced it where, you know, I'm I know this person and then I see them with the other person and I'm just like, okay. Yeah, that's wild. You know that's what crazy. I mean? And I, I just, you know, you got sometimes you gotta love people from a distance. <laughs> and I guess that's Real what they do to me. I guess that's what they're doing to me. I'm sorry. My phone is bleep, 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 bleep. Yeah. I don't know. Talk to me um, about Talk to me about Yeah, so I don't know. Huh? No, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Finish your thought. No, so yeah, I, I you know, I don't know and I don't uh hold it against anybody. I'm I like I said, I don't have any bitterness. That's I leave that for the other people. I, I appreciate um, that. You yeah, know, because like, that's why you're a better person than me, because I'm over here with voodoo dolls. And <laughs> I don't have to. You know what I mean? I, I have a strong faith. I believe in God. And, you know, I'm like, God handle that. What can I do, you know, to, that, that God could do better? Nothing. <laughs> so no I no, have to. Because it, it, and you have to think of it, and, you know, you have to think of it in those terms for yourself. You know what I mean? Just for your own mental health. I'm not saying I'm always up, you know what I mean? I have my down days too, you know what I mean? And I did, I had to go to therapy to, to you know, to deal with a lot of the, the you know, things happening because that was a traumatic experience. And I experienced it when I was, uh, I was 22. I when I was 22, like three days before my 23rd birthday. So it was a lot to, um, and then I had to go back to work immediately, which was a whole nother other story. That's a, so, that seems impossible to do to have to go back to work right after that. Yeah, there's a lot in there that I'm not gonna say, you know. Uh, but I do, I do have those details. I'm working on a book, and I've been working on this book for a minute now, and I'm so glad that it's almost done because I got to add a lot of things that I don't think I would have put in there. Mm. And I put those, you know, those details in there. But excuse me, through therapy and just having a positive mental attitude bad brains again those who know bad brains you know pma did um did yeah you know what i mean and so and, and you know i sleep well <laughs> you know what i mean i'm not i'm not you know i'm healthy you know you got to count your blessings you got to look at you know i'm still here i'm still standing you know what i mean there's still more for me to do yeah my career suffered and i and i'm not the only woman that that you know that that happens to it seems that it happens to more women than it does men in any industry. Um, but yeah, my career suffered big time. I, we had the same agent. We had the same, Dre and I had the wow. same agent and they dropped me. <laughs> and they dropped me. They were like, yo, well. <laughs> right, this town ain't big enough for the two of you. And and, 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 and the, the money, the money's over here. There's more money over here, you know? And, uh, and, and like, so what can I do? Have that conversation, like, look, D, this terrible thing happened to you and we can't defend it. It's awful, but I can't, we can't represent both of you and he makes a lot more money, so. <laughs> right, <laughs> so, so deuce, good luck. <laughs> right, I mean. But that is the business. That's the business, you know what I mean? That's the business. And anybody knows when you're in this business, you gotta be tough. You gotta have you have thick skin. You can't be, you can't be, you can't be weak about it because it's gonna be some trials and tribulations, you know. It's, but it's, yeah. It's so hard to be in this business and be principal. 
Uh, I want to ask you about right. something else too. Um, <laughs> I want to ask you about hip hop journalism. I mean, mm. again, <laughs> about, why are you like, I'm, sorry. We're, we're, we're I'm laughing about. because you know what popped into my head all these damn blogs. It's oh, not about okay. music anymore. It's about gossip and who got a DUI and all this old bullshit. I just like, my mind is just, as soon as you say hip hop journalism and I just, the blogs popped up into my head and I'm just like, wow. That's a great place to go because I, I think that the journey from what was to what is in some ways is interesting and good. There's a lot of platforms. There's a lot of podcasts. Everybody, even their mama got a podcast. Right. I'm not, I'm not sure it's journalism anymore, and I'm not sure that a lot of it is about the music anymore. I think you're yeah. right. It's unfortunate because I feel like it, the problem lies with reading. Mm. <laughs> reading and reading comprehension is yes. kicking everybody's ass <laughs> right about yes. now. And if you look at society as a whole, especially this country, and what they're doing with banning books and you know, misinformation that's going on. It like it's dumbing down of a nation. For sure. And I think that, that with hip hop journalism, back in the day, we had magazines that we could read. Yes. The print. And when you put the print out there, the facts have to be correct. Yes. There has to be facts. You know what I mean? You can't just print some bullshit. And if you did, you gotta retract it. And you got, you know what I mean? There's apologies and that's a whole process. That has been turned upside down in the yeah. digital age. So now all of those rules that we had, the etiquette is gone. It's gone out the window. It's wild, wild west. Yeah. Everybody, you know, I can get over here right now and just, you know, just spout any bullshit and point to, you know, the screen behind me and say, this is what happened to that. And they run it. They run with it. And, and then and we it, have the, the, the threat of uh, AI, too, which is wow. really this is really messing up the game. The AI is blowing my mind. I mean, I'm watching this from a distance. I think it's a little corny, but I'm watching this Drake beef with everybody, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. And every day I'm hearing people on their TikToks and on their Instagram is linking me to songs. And I'm listening and I'm like, okay, that's, that's all right. Then people are like, oh, wait, it turned out that wasn't really him. That was AI. That's a fake. Right. I'm like, we're making fake music on top of fake blogs, on top of, you know. And, and it's like, it doesn't matter what's true anymore. It's just as long as the story is good, people don't mm -hmm. care. If, if it's good, and I'm finding that really difficult um, to deal with because I came up as a hip hop head in the era of Source, in the era right. of even Vibe. Vibe magazine, yeah. It was like, yeah, I mean, so, I mean, there's you, you know, and, and there's different spaces to do, whether it's TV, whether it's, you know, whether it's Five Five Freddy, whether it's yep. you, whether it's Dream Hampton, whether it's Joe Morgan, you know, mm -hmm. it, it, Akiba Solomon, you know, um, Kevin, I'm talking so about many. black women right now. You right, know, right. There's, there's all kinds of, there's brothers who did some interesting stuff too, but I mean, black women were the heartbeat of, mm -hmm. of, of hip hop journalism. Right. I don't think we give y'all credit. I don't think we even acknowledge that. I, don't, I think that people don't even realize that. I think that's the thing. They don't realize it. This goes back to what I was saying about, you know, <laughs> the handbook, the guidebook. We need like, as a matter of fact, um, well, let me not get off the subject, but I think too, like it goes back to reading. We don't have that anymore. So now everybody's consuming their information in sound bites. And so nobody's really, it's not really regulated. You know what I mean? Like, how do you discern what's, what's real? You know what I mean? With all of this misinformation out there, it, it's, it's, it's tough. So I feel like now hip hop journalism is, you know, unless you're reading it in print you know, and even that could be sketchy. Um, but you're not getting the facts anymore. Right. There's a and few podcasts out there. Nobody reads print magazines anymore. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. Nobody, nobody wants to read it. So they want to get theirs in like 10 seconds on a TikTok. You know what I mean? Yeah. Everything's consumed in sound bites. I just think to to really to combat that, it needs to be more, you know, um, journalists, you know, counter counter putting out counter information like the right information you know there needs to be more of that platform and it needs to focus on the music as opposed to the lifestyle we're getting caught up in the lifestyle and we're not you know focusing on the music and sometimes i don't even want the music unless they can have access to the lifestyle you know what i mean and the yeah. lifestyle is used to promote the music <laughs> so it's like 
there's no balance. And I think that's the problem, you know, in hip hop in general, there's just no balance because we have all of these women, you know, out there right now. And, you know, a lot of uh, men are complaining, oh, it's the same thing. They talk about the same thing. No, they don't. there's so many other female MCs out there that speaking, you know, I don't hear you supporting Rhapsody. You know what I mean? Like, Sarah. Right. You know what I mean? Like, there's, Ooh, you know. Uh, fire MCs. There's Lady London. Lady That's London. I, yeah, She's Lady London. She's dope. Um, there's so many. And they're different. You know? And they're different. And they've you know, always been out there, but you let them tell it. They only see, they're only hearing one thing because right. they're not really listening. They're, they're listening. looking, <laughs> they're right. watching, but they're not, you know what I mean? They're not really listening and they're yeah. not trying to seek that out. It's not catching their attention. It's not that sound bite moment for them. You know what, what I mean? Do do? What do we do then? Well, how do we fix What do we do? I think it just needs to, there needs to be balance. So we need to flood it with, you know, the other side, <laughs> the other aspects of it. You know yeah. what I mean? Because it's not, turn the channel. There's not just one channel, but that's what we're being constantly fed, that one channel. I remember Moni Love put it so perfectly. She said, everybody's aiming to shoot for the same basket. And I was like, damn, that's what you're right. Everybody's aiming for that one basket when there's like the whole full court. Let's get a full court press on. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. <laughs> you know? So I, I just feel like, to to combat anything negative, you gotta you gotta flood it with some positive. You know yeah. what I mean? And it's gotta be, you have to package it though in the way that people are going to consume it. So, you know, right now everybody's consuming things faster and faster, like I was saying, in little sound bites. So now we gotta we gotta serve it to them like that. Unfortunately, that's what people want. Uh, one of the big controversies that's come up lately, um, and we started talking about it earlier, but one of the big uh controversies that came up was um diddy mm. a lot of conversation about diddy in fact i feel like it's all we talk about in, in, in some ways the last few months i'm not sure we're having a right conversation about, about puff yeah. when you first, when you heard the allegations uh beginning i guess in november with cassie mm -hmm. until now with, with puff uh what went through your mind i was disgusted and disappointed i still am you know what I mean? Um, I'm always going to support victims, no matter what. And, you know, I'm heartbroken for, for the victims. I really am. Um, and as far as Sean, I'm just disgusted and disappointed. Disappointed like, is really? the word. Did you, were, you, were you actually surprised? Was, was that different than what you thought? I, it was, for me... You know, and you know, you'll hear this a lot with like with women who know someone who's experienced sexual assault or domestic violence, you know, um, battered, bruised, what have you. There's always other women who did not experience that with that particular person. And that's because they know, you know, who to charm, who not to charm who to manipulate, who not to manipulate, you know, that's part of grooming, just a whole nother subject. But my experience with Sean has never been, you know, in some type of neg negative interaction. Yeah. So it was, that's why I'm disgusted and surprised now. When the allegations were, when everything was brought to the forefront with Cassie, I had heard rumors prior to that and then uh, prior to Cassie, I heard rumors about, you know, the late Kim Porter, but I didn't know, you know, I didn't have any facts, just, just you know, hearsay. R rumors of abuse. Rum rumors of abuse, exactly. And so when everything came out and, you know, you, you see it reading, here we go back to reading and you read what was happening and these facts that were in, you know, then it's just like, ah, you know, I'm 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 disgusted. I'm disgusted because when you think about, you know, the legacy, your legacy is about your entire life, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And this you can't get no uglier than this. This is horrible. When when I hear the the the, the puff conversation, I would feel better if 
what you're talking about is what we're talking about. But it seems like all I hear on the blogs, on the, the in the jokes and the conversation mm -hmm. and the outrage and all this stuff is about sexuality. It's all about right. Is is, is are dudes involved? Is is this yeah. some shit happening? No one's you talking know, about the abuse, the allegations right. of abuse or assault or trafficking or underage. All I keep hearing is, is he gay? Yeah. You know, people make jokes sometimes to deal with, I mean, and this is just my opinion and my own opinion, um, to try to um, subdue whatever feelings they have in regards to that. They know how serious it is, but, you know, they're going to make light of it regardless because they don't want to feel that like that there's that that balance of of sympathy and empathy you know what i mean they don't want to feel that they don't want to feel that pain and they don't want to acknowledge it and this is just my opinion so you know you got the jokes or whatever or the distraction of the sexuality cuz they don't want to deal with the the fact that maybe they were they maybe they've experienced some type of sexual trauma and so they don't want to deal with it. So to me as a whole, you know, people are, you know, let's make light of it. Let's make a joke about it. And then, you know, it comes back around to the reality of the, the truth. I mean, these people were damaged. You know what I mean? They were hurt. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like I said, I'm always going to support and be on the side of victims um, no matter what. And, um I'm just I'm 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 disgusted and disappointed. And you know, we gotta wait, of course, for because no formal charges have been brought yet. No, no, it's, it's, just, all, it's all hearsay and I mean the optics don't look good. The feds and the homeland security don't bust in your crib no, for no reason. No, we don't mm -hmm. know that yet. We don't know what's going on. We don't know what, but you know, we do know what was brought up in the lawsuit from the filing, and that right there is enough. That right there is enough to, you know, make me not want to, you know, have any association with him whatsoever. Unfortunately, Absolutely not. Unfortunately, again, to the Dre point, it seems like there's nobody who's distancing themselves from Puff, just like nobody distancing themselves from Dre based on allegations of violence and assault. It's only gay rumors and, and sexuality stuff that makes people... You know, start to have conversations, and now the kids mm -hmm. are saying, "Oh, Diddy," and you know, with right, you know, and it's like it's all this deep homophobia that I think is, is part of the problem. When, when you think about where hip hop was then, and, and you know, when you had your incident, and now, have we grown? Have we matured? Has the has the culture gotten any better? Not just on, on violence, but just in general around gender and 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 sexuality and and and, and just being decent to each other. Um, I still think we have a lot, a lot. A long way to go, basically, is what I'm saying. Um, and it's because we never healed the wounds from the past. You know, Tupac has that line about, um, and keep your head up, it will have a race of, of babies that hate the ladies. Right. Because that should have been addressed back in the days. It should have been shut down back in the day, you know, when, when it first sprung up. It's, you know, and I think too that had it been um, perhaps it would have prevented, you know, other incidents within the music industry. I'm picking my words very, very carefully, <laughs> very carefully, because all of this is allegedly. But um, yes. yeah, I think I think that, um, you know, we haven't we haven't addressed those issues. I think somewhere in between, you know, self destruction and fast forward through the 2000s that we lost that we lost that that um, i'm always saying like hip-hop was about community back then when you think about self-destruction when you think about the heel project when you think about we're all in the same gang that's about community and then it turned into you know capitalism it's consumerism it's all about that lifestyle you know what i mean and and that lifestyle is not all good do you does it make you want to walk away from hip-hop Never. And somebody else asked me that, too. I mean, even though someone put it, uh, you love hip hop, but hip hop didn't love you. OK. I mean, in some but ways, they're not wrong. They're not wrong. They ate me up with that. <laughs> and this was a, this was a close relative. They ate me up with that. Um, but at the same time. 
you don't, you know, some, some people, you don't throw away people. You don't throw away something, you know, they mess up. Um, and I'm not talking cancel culture. That's, that's not where I'm, I'm coming from. I'm just saying that, um, and maybe it's just me. I'm built differently. There's always hope. You know, I'm very optimistic about it. You know, I feel like we're growing, you know, and changing. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's bad. But I will, ne- I will never abandon hip hop. You know what I mean? Even though, you know, like I said, somebody is saying, well, hip hop abandoned you. I don't, you know, I don't feel that at all. I don't feel like they have you know, been completely abandoned, you know. Maybe people, um, maybe people, but not the culture itself. Yeah, maybe people, not the culture itself. Um, you know, because it really wasn't the culture that created it. You know, what I mean, this is bigger than hip hop. This is society in general. These are problems that that were existed before hip hop. <laughs> hip hop was born out of that 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 craziness in the Bronx. You know what I mean? Economic challenges and, you know, political challenges, all, all of that. Drugs, you know what I mean? Sexual violence, you know, physical violence. That, that's where hip hop came from. We made something out of nothing. So, and I, you know, I feel like being an OG now, you know, that's my blood, sweat and tears in there. I'm not abandoning it. I helped build that shit. I'm not, I'm not going nowhere. <laughs> I, I ain't going nowhere. I, I love it. I'm gonna help. I'm gonna help heal it. I'm. Sorry, I'm gonna be Harriet Tugman. So during the truth around this motherfucker, just be, we gonna go. If you can't, if you can't keep up, <laughs> we are gonna leave you behind. <laughs> what she say? She shot you, <laughs> Harriet. <laughs> those are the ones that Harriet would have shot. Maybe. Right. You know what I mean? But no, I'm not. I'm not. Because it wasn't hip hop that did it. You know what I mean? This is this is something that's been you know, in society way before hip hop, way before the music. Yeah. You know what I mean? This is not something they picked up from the music. No. When you think about the next phase of your career, because you got a long way to go, what, hmm. what, what does it look like for you? What do you want it to look like? I want it to look like groceries. <laughs> <laughs> I want it to look like Facts. financial stability. <laughs> I want it to look like retirement. <laughs> I want it. I want those things. You know, um, recently, Chuck D, Curtis Blow, and at KRS One, I think a few. They recently put together a, a union for hip hop. We we know we we, we haven't heard none, nothing heard about nothing that. About it. I, I, nothing I only about know that from from last year. Right, all last year during the 50th, you didn't hear nothing about it. Well, we, hip hop finally has a union like to take care of our, we never had that. You know what I mean? When you look at the next generation, the generation that started blowing up, okay, so we say the, the early, the late 80s, early 90s, and then like the money really started rolling in during the 2000s. But all those OGs that were in the 70s were not taken built, care of. this thing who built it were not taken care of. So this is something that they started to help because now we're the OGs. So now we got to start looking out, you know what I mean, and building. And if you look at what's happening, a lot of us, um, and when I say us, like the, the hip hop community, we're, we're losing legends in their 50s. Nobody's living for old age. Why? <laughs> Why? Is it, this, is it the, the stress of, you know, the industry? Is it the stress of, of, you know, carrying that on their back? Is it the stress of all of that, you know, disgusting behavior that's happening around in the background? It's a sick environment. You know, what's happening where we're losing a lot of our our, our, our legends? You know what I mean? Is it health care? A lot of it is. <laughs> you know what I mean? A lot of it is health care. You know what I mean? So I think this is great that they, you know, that they started this. And it's unfortunate that we're not hearing more about it. But... I want to help make sure that the you know the next generation is you know on a, on another level, um, taking care of themselves, just like Megan Thee Stallion um, has the mental health um, hotline. You know what I mean? And somebody had tweeted out the other day, "Do you think therapy is ruining hip hop?" And, and it was like, "Is therapy in the room with hip hop?" You know what I mean? Right. No. 
like we need that. We need people need to start taking care of themselves, you know. Um J. Cole was talking about when he apologized, he put it out there and then he decided, you know, what, I did think you that was, that move? what did you make of J. Cole's move? My thing was, and this is when I go back to you know making a joke about we're losing recipes. The rules are if your heart's not in it, don't say nothing, don't respond. You don't put something out and you go, eh, I changed my mind. But right. That's I have to give him, yeah, but I have to give him props for being man enough to to take it back. And he should because it was trash. How are you gonna, you know, have transphobic? things up there. What did the trans community do to you? Why are you using that as a punchline? You know what I mean? That's, I'm, I'm not down for none of that oppression. You know what I mean? Nobody, nobody. I'm not down for the oppression at all. So why you want to oppress them? You know what I mean? Why you want to, you know, tease, you know, what, what did that have to do with anything? So yeah, he should have taken it back. I agree. But, um, like I said, we're losing recipes. <laughs> you don't respond. Right. If you not, if your heart's not in it, don't say nothing. You know what right. I mean? Keep it mute, keep it cute. Right. You, you know what I mean? Out, and then it looks like you, you pulled back because you weren't winning. Um, no. Not even but you he I don't think he, he pulled back because he didn't think he was winning. He knew it was trash what he did. I mean, and I don't know. I'm not I, in his I, mind. I'm not it's just my opinion. I, I, I'm just saying, no, I agree with everything you just said. I just mean. I'm worried that the public won't respect the actual reason because they'll think he did it because he didn't like his performance. I think I think in Cole's mind, he thought he killed it. And I think he really just had a change of heart and it wasn't sitting well with his spirit. And I respect that. But there are going to be people. I hear people saying, oh, Cole came up weak, came, you know, he about to get ate up in his battle. So, he, he, you know, he sat down I'm like that ain't it. He was trying to he wanted to sleep at night. I mean, I, I just think what he put out there was horrible. <laughs> not that it was weak or, you know, it wasn't good. You know, it was just like, what are you talking about? Like, why are you bringing up, you know, I'm, 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 I'm not like any transphobia, any homophobia. Oh, the transphobia. Like, you know, I didn't even catch yeah. that. I saw it later. Yes, yes, yes. You know what I mean? That's what I'm talking about. Like, why are you, why are you bringing that up into the, to the subject? And, and that's what you would just, that goes back to what you were just saying about all the allegations and how they're bringing up sexuality. I had nothing to do with nothing. You know what I mean? So yeah, and you did the right be. thing. You did the right thing taking that back because it was trash. I'm sorry, it was. Yeah. I, I I I agree on that level. Yes, yes, yes. No, I agree. Yeah. But what? I do give him props for being for you know taking that stand. I know it blew everybody's mind, and he's taking all the heat with it. But he's standing ten toes down on apologizing. Hello, that's that's called manning up. That's yeah. man. That's man right there. Public apology to right. all the people he offended. Right. <laughs> I, me I messed names. up. Yeah, as he should. You know what I mean? So I, I respect that, that he did that. You know what I mean? But other than that, you know, the rules are if you want, if you, you don't want to respond, don't respond. Don't, don't put nothing out there and they go, ah, you know what? I'm going to take that back. Uh -uh. Right. You could have just the right to remain solid. What's, um, didn't, uh, Grandmaster, not Grandmaster, Melly Mel just did that. Yes. Recently, same thing. He put it out there, and then he decided no. And I was just like, "Come on." Yeah, people. Mel, Melly Mel was getting them jokes from from you know. First of all, you shouldn't Melly be battling Mel, with him. First of all, I mean, Melly Mel, no, too. He's an OG. I was there when he took the belt. <laughs> I mean, that was a music seminar. That's an infamous time time in history, and you know, I was taking pictures with the and the, <laughs> I was like, "Oh my God!" I wish I was recording. It was, it was amazing, but he was on the mic and that was battling. You know what I mean? Battling is a part that healthy competition is a part of hip hop. It's when it, 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 it spills over into violence. That's, that's, that's where you got to draw the line, but the healthy competition on the mic is all good. You I know what it. I mean? I, Me I too. Of, I think part of the problem though lately is it's like the, the battle language and the battle approaches don't feel like competitive fire it don't feel like the bridge wars it don't feel like i'm when, I, when you heard kill that noise you weren't really worried about no beef and look the, people died and you know back then but but not from rap beef you know like right, like, right. like you, you know what i'm saying so mm -hmm. like Heart didn't die from a rap beef like, right like, I, like like i appreciate the rap tension i love the battle i don't want beef i want battles and right. I think this had the opportunity to be an amazing battle. But then 
you know, Cole for some reason didn't sit well with the spirit. So I respect that. But I, right. but I do wish more people got into the actual rapping of it. I'm watching Drake and Rick Ross go back and forth on, on Instagram. <laughs> Social media. <laughs> the yeah. girls are fighting. The girls are fighting. Yo. Well, I, it's funny about BBLs you that. and Yes. And BBLs and uh, what else? The six pack surgery. Yeah, nose job the BBL, surgery. The six pack, the nose job. You, you don't write your own lyrics. I mean, if you had told me even two years ago that there'd be two prominent rappers in, 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 that are going to be going back and forth and they're going to be that BBL and nose <laughs> job and nose writer. I would, I would have never believed it. Cardi B and Nikki. Not these. I would have never, not even the women would ever, you know, they're not even going there. No, <laughs> they, they, they They might be pointing out some other stuff, but I mean. I, I just don't like it. And then again, even if they did that on wax, I'd be like, I don't like that particular topic, but whatever, do you think? These fools, they're on Instagram and they make so much money from the other platforms. They don't actually need to rap. And no. that's what I don't like. I, I don't like. The Lotto tweet. said it best. Get in the booth, bitch. <laughs> Lotto, Lotto with the t-shirt. Shout out to Lotto. She said it best. Get in the booth, bitch. If you Yo. got something to say, keep keep it there. You know what I mean? Keep it on the mic. But, that's all you know, I'm like when they want to troll, they want to clown. And it would be it would be entertaining if the music was on the right on the level. <laughs> on the level of the trolling, you know right. what I mean. If the music was on the level, I mean, some of them AI joints was better than the ones that they was writing. Facts. <laughs> so Facts. It's, it's embarrassing. That's why they got to go to the, the social media and clown each other. Yeah, it's it's, it's cool. Tell, oh, tell the game, the game, the game is just the sideways. <laughs> the lace front, the lace front is not it's not lined up with the hairline. <laughs> Yo, like literally. <laughs> Oh um, God! You said that the next phase for you is stability. How 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 does that going to come? What can we do to support that? What do you need? Those are jokes. Those are jokes. Um, the oh, next shit, phase yo, for me not jokes, yo. Every yeah. I, I just say this for myself, yo. <laughs> jokes, I'm, jokes. No, 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 no. I'm being serious, and the reason I say this is because when you work in media, mm. and, or you work as an artist or some combination, even if it's going well, you're always one bad season. One bad statement, <laughs> one bad moment, one yep. bad illness from being at the bottom. And I, I, I remember working at CNN and I had speaking engagements all around the world. I gave one speech and before I knew it, I lost all my money. All my, I mean, I was literally trying to scratch to pay bills and then COVID came, you know, yep. and, and it's like, I get that. And I'm, I was saying to myself, like, thankfully I have a professor job. So, I, you know, I so right. that always keeps me like from falling too far, but you know, my lifestyle ain't built around <laughs> being a professor, right? right? So right. I keep, I'm, I'm always thinking like, what does the next phase of my life look like that I can set myself up? Not to be good, you know, gajillionaire rich, but to have stability mm -hmm. and stability. to be able to control my own destiny. Right. That's the thing for me. And I think people don't understand how hard it is for media people and for women in particular, because, right. you know, you get a five-year deal that that sounds great to them five years right ago. and then they like well just, and the five years, years go like that they go like that they go mm -hmm. like that money gone yeah it's like does that how, how do you think about that as a, as, as someone who, who's been in media you know for, for a lot of your career like and and for the next generation of artists and the next generation of media makers like what do you say to them like how do you what what should the next phase look like so that everybody's okay it's a great question, and I wish I had the words to articulate it um, because I do think about the next generation. Like, you know, I have a lot of young journalists that I speak to a lot, um, and they, you know, we have some deep conversations about um, building a platform and, you know, taking it to the next level and sustaining it. Um, what I've learned from them, though, I will tell you what I've learned from the young women that came up behind me is that you can never just have one source of income. You have to have yes. it's got to you got to be multi, you know, what I mean, multi this, multi that. Um, and that's a lesson that I, you know, that I took from because, you know, I'm I'm an older generation. I come from the, the, the generation where we, you know, a lot of people have one job all their life type thing you know what i mean right. but you look at the millennials and especially the z's the gen z's 
they are moving job to job. job. There is no loyalty. They do not care. None. They be out. They be out and don't even think twice. And I, I love that about them because they're not, they're not, you know, I'm not going to say they're not fearful. Yeah, they're worried about it, but they, they put themselves first and their mental health first. And it's like, first and, first and foremost, because if they can't take care of themselves mentally, how could they function? And so what I've learned from the, the generation coming up behind me is that you just have to juggle. You have to have different, you know, opportunities. You have to do, you have different, have to have different streams of income. So I'm building that right now. And for me in particular, and it's, it's always hard to start over. Um, and it feels like for me, like I, I'm just now getting the opportunity to start over years later. You know what I mean? I always say it was like girl interrupted, like things came to a halt. I did pivot into something else that, you know, I kind of wish that I stuck with. I'm not going to get into the details, but oh, no, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the point is that, um, you know, looking back now, like you learn from your mistakes and like now I'm, I'm, you know, starting over again, which is fine. Um, but you know, it gets a little harder the older you get. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not yeah. as easy, but it can be done. You know what I mean? So it will be done. It will be done. Exactly. It's, it's being done right now in, in the process of us just us talking. You know what I mean? So I know that there's going to be other opportunities out there for me. And I know, you know, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I, for the first time ever, I've built a, a great team. And I didn't build it, but I've got involved with a great team that's behind me, that's you know helping me push forward. So, and it was definitely meant oh, that goes a long way because I've never had that throughout my whole career. And I think about it now, I'm like my God, I navigate when I did pump it up. We didn't have, I didn't have a manager. You know what I mean? I had I had an agent, <laughs> but I didn't have like you know managers and all of this stuff. Managers actually care about you. <laughs> yeah. You know, managers that care about me. I did have a lawyer cause I always believed in taking care of the legal, you know, work first, but you know, you, you learn, you learn as you go along. And, uh, I've learned a lot and I'm taking all of that wisdom with, with me right now. And I'm about to build something, you know, my main focus right now is to get my book out. I've been working on it for the longest and it's we almost done. We need them recipes. <sighs> them recipes is going to be in that book. Let me tell you. It's going to be in because I, I don't understand what's happening. <laughs> Who's nope. bringing the potato salad? Who's messing up the macaroni and cheese? Right. <laughs> the, hip -hop, the hip hop potluck is not working out. We got to we gotta fix this. We got to do something. We got to fix people, it. People keep asking me for your cash app. Do you have a cash Do you use cash app? <laughs> yes. <laughs> are, are you comfortable sharing it? I okay. People, <laughs> little, people ask it. I don't, oh, all right, okay. I don't, you know. I'm, oh wow. I don't even know what to say on that. Look, say, say, here's what you say. You say, hold on while I write this cash app. <laughs> yeah, hold on, hold on while I while I figure out. <laughs> this is so wild. Really? People are saying that? That's I'm crazy. Saying, there's literally comments right here. And I don't, I don't, you know, it, it, and I, I can tell you this is a very supportive um community i'm about to be i'm about to be emotional you can make it you can make it an oprah moment i'm about to cry <laughs> <laughs> don't do me like that <laughs> that was crazy okay um my cash app mm -hmm. uh is dollar sign of course that would be the first one mm -hmm. capital d <laughs> barnes b-a-r-n-e-s p-i-u P-I-U. Which stands for pump it up. Of course. It took me a second. I'm a little slow. So, so, so it's a little cash symbol, D, Barnes, P-I-U. All right, y'all. I, I posted it right here on the screen, too. So, yep, that's it. <laughs> so, everybody, please make a donation if you feel inclined to. Wow. Whatever y'all were going to send to me tonight for, for night school, send it over to D. Oh, um, no. Don't do that. I'm, no, please, please stop. <laughs> oh my you, God! You, thank you. You deserve, you, deserve, you deserve so much more than than we've ever given you, and you deserve everything you're, you're going to receive. So thank you, brother. I appreciate you. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate you. You got to come oh, back yeah. on. You got to come oh, back. Oh yeah, on. this was fun. I would definitely love to come back on.
I wasn't sure what to expect. I watched a couple of your shows. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I can hang. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm an easygoing person, man. You know, I just, I just like to, I just love to talk to people who got stuff to say. You know? Me too. I feel you on that. I love talking to people with, you know, that with interesting lifestyle and interesting life and learning some stuff. I love, you know, I love people. That's why I went into journalism and, you know, like I have no problem, you know, with the live audience type thing. It's like I, I know. I live for I, it. I, I I want to tell you, um, and I really mean this, that you are um, a treasure to our um Thank to our you. culture into our community and if no one else tells you we love you we need you uh we value you we appreciate you thank and you we're gonna be here for you from 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 this moment forward just like we should have been there for you from this moment pre it's never too late thank you so much i really appreciate you um thank you for having me on and you know, thank you for giving me these, those virtual flowers. You know what I mean? They, they've definitely uplifted my spirit. And, you know, I'm just going to, I'm just going to keep moving forward. I'm not going to, um, I had been silent for a long time and, you know, I'm going to use my voice. Please, I'm please. going to use my voice. I'm not going to be silent anymore. We need it. We need it. We need it. Well, D, I'll holler at you soon. You're going to come right. back soon. Yes, I will. Kiss that baby. Look, we need the recipes. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, you go definitely. I'm gonna. I'm definitely gonna uh, make sure you get a copy first, and then we're gonna come back on to discuss it because it's gonna be some bet. things in there. There's gonna be a lot of um, a lot of details. A lot. I'm gonna clear up a lot of myths. The name of the book is called Music, Myth, and Misogyny: Memoirs of a Female MC, like Memoirs of a yeah. of a Geisha. And uh, you know, um, oh wait, I'm sorry. I'm before. gonna be. I'm gonna be honest in in the book. I'm just gonna be honest and tell. Tell it all. Yo, that is real. Yo, yeah. April L. Silver, April R. Silver, she <laughs> works on set. Please share the Zell, please. Because people are asking for Zell too. People are literally in the comments, like, what is her Zell? Do you do Zell too? Yes, I do Zell. Um, I'm sorry, my, my earpiece went out. Can you hear me? Yep. I had to switch up. Um, yeah, the Zell is under um, in my email. It's D E E underscore bar. Oh. At ymail.com, which is now going to be flooded <laughs> with all kinds of. <laughs> now we got we got we got a good audience here. They're not like that. You you you. No, you're I asking. mean I just I I'm I just know. I just oh. I, get, I get them anyway. <laughs> oh, got you, got you, got you. <laughs> Emails. <laughs> got you. I got you. Some good, some bad. Well, hopefully these come through with 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 with, with goodness. With gro groceries, yo, oh, that's, that's gonna happen. I'm not even a little bit worried about that. Ooh, I'm like, yes, I was just talking to um, I'm not gonna mention who they were, but it was it was a rapper, and I was, I was like, yo, I'm starving. <laughs> yo, <laughs> like, I'd be, it, be like, it, yo, it'd be, it'd be like that. Well, look, I we, okay. we got you, we love you, and we're gonna support you, everybody. Uh, please. I love you, brother. Thank what you I so see. much. Love you too. We'll talk soon. All right, everybody. This is this is what it means to be in community. Yo, D Barnes is a legend. D Barnes is uh, one of the foundational figures in, in hip hop journalism and hip hop culture and hip hop media. Um, and it's not an exaggeration to say that we owe her a tremendous debt. And I'm not just talking about money and all of that stuff. That I'm talking about culturally. I'm talking about the flowers that we need. Uh, to give her we need to do all of that right now i don't um i don't ever want to um overstate somebody's importance or understate somebody's importance there's nothing overstating about saying that d barnes is an absolute legend and the thing that d barnes uh is being i think um humble about but also careful about for lots of reasons that make sense but i don't need to be is um this culture disregarded her when she stood up against dr dre after he assaulted her she got abandoned by the culture you know there were moments where we had to do where, where not we i wasn't part of it. i don't want to take credit for it where people were uh doing gofundmes and, and supporting her because she had been left and locked out of an industry and the culture that she helped build you know nobody should be at, at a point where they're getting flowers for being a legend but also not getting the opportunities, not getting opportunities to, to, to do 
to do what they want to do, to do the, to engage the culture on their own terms. Like there, there's a beauty in that. There is, I don't know, man. I, I could go on and on about it, but I'm very frustrated with how D Barnes um, has been has been treated. Um, we have not treated her well in this culture. It's just that simple, and we need to. So, um, I would ask people again who are going to make. Um, a contribution to me tonight or to jo to the show to drop something into D Barnes's um cash app um and, or to her Zell um because she deserves it. It's really that simple. Also, some of y'all have dropped some things into uh us, so I want to shout y'all out. Nicole Davis became a, a, a member tonight. Thank you. We appreciate you. Wounded Wound Mind of Lila did the same. We saw my sister April Silver uh shouting up uh uh shouting out a uh, shouting out pump it up which was legendary yes sir thank you so much for, for for the kind uh donation i'll make sure that d gets this, this is not for me so if y'all send it through um uh through super chats or super stickers i'll make sure that d gets that as well i'll send it over tonight um so if because some of y'all don't use cash apps and stuff like that i'll make yes sir. i'll make sure it, it comes over um you're much appreciated and fate look thank you fate look donated 20 memberships to the channel yo y'all so much love in this room so much love in this building y'all are much appreciated all right family thank you for watching the channel hit the like button and let the algorithms know that you like content like this hit the subscribe button so you can expand our network and our community and of course hit the join button if you're so inclined so that you can become a monthly subscriber and supporter of the channel all of it is greatly appreciated uh, again, tonight we cash up in D Barnes. We sell in D Barnes, not me. Make sure she gets it. Uh, and keep watching because Monday to Friday, night school is going to be just like this. We're going to be breaking stuff down. We're also going to have amazing voices who come in and have the conversation with us. Uh, I'm going to see y'all soon. In fact, I'm going to see you real soon because right after this, we got the Gaza update. The war on Gaza reaches day 196. We'll tell you all about it right after this. Stay, stay here on the Mark on my